When you break something up, you create things. When you create something, you destroy things. Material things have no creation or destruction. Ultimately, these concepts connect as one. Only the enlightened know that they connect as one. So instead of debating this with your preconceptions, approach it in an ordinary way. Those with this ordinary approach simply apply the idea. Those who apply it connect with it. Those who connect with it attain it. This easily attained understanding is not far off. Great knowledge sees all in one. Small knowledge breaks down into the many. Goods and possessions are no gain in his eyes. He stays far from wealth and honour. Long life is no ground for joy. Nor early death for sorrow. Success is not for him to be proud of. Failure is no shame. Had he all the world's power, he would not hold it as his own. If he conquered everything, he would not take it to himself. His glory is in knowing that all things come together in one. And life and death are equal. When he tries to extend his power over objects, those objects gain control of him. One who is controlled by objects loses possession of their inner self. Prisoners in the world of object they have no choice but to submit to the demands of matter. They are pressed down and crushed by external forces, 
fashion, the market, events, public opinion. Never in a whole lifetime do they recover their right mind. What a pity. You train your eye and your vision lasts after colour. You train your ear and you long for delightful sound. You delight in doing good and your natural kindness is blown out of shape. You delight in righteousness and you become righteous beyond all reason. You overdo liturgy and you turn into a ham actor. Overdo your love of music and you play corn. Love of wisdom leads to wise contriving. Love of knowledge leads to fault finding. If people would stay as they really are, taking or leaving these eight delights would make no difference. But if they will not rest in their right state, the eight delights develop like malignant tumours. The world falls into confusion. Since people honour these delights and lust after them, the world has gone stone blind. When the delight is over, they still will not let go of it. Love of colours bewilders the eye and it fails to see right. Love of harmonies bewitches the ear and it loses its true hearing. Love of perfumes fills the head with dizziness. Love of flavours ruins the taste. Desires unsettle the heart until the original nature runs amok.
These five are enemies of true life. Yet these are what people of discernment claim to live for. They are not what I live for. If this is life, then pigeons in a cage have found happiness. Tao is obscured when people understand only one pair of opposites or concentrate only on a partial aspect of being. Then clear expression also becomes muddled by mere wordplay, affirming this one aspect and denying all the rest. The pivot of Tao passes through the centre where all affirmations and denials converge. One who sees the pivot is at the still point from which all movements and oppositions can be seen in their right relationship. Abandoning all thought of imposing a limit, all taking sides, they rest in direct intuition. When we look at things in the light of Tao, nothing is best, nothing is worst. Each thing, seen in its own light, stands out in its own way. It can seem to be better than what is compared with it on its own terms. But seen in terms of the whole, no one thing stands out as better. All creatures have gifts of their own. All things have varying capacities. Consequently, one who wants to have right without wrong, order without disorder, does not understand the principles of heaven and earth. They do not know how things hang together. Can a person cling only to heaven? and know nothing of earth? They are correlative. To know one is to know the other. To refuse one is to refuse both.
When the shoe fits, the foot is forgotten. When the belt fits, the belly is forgotten. When the heart is right, for and against are forgotten. No drives, no compulsions, no needs, no attractions. Then your affairs are under control. You are free. If you can empty your own boat, crossing the river of the world, no one will oppose you, no one will seek to harm you. Who can free themselves from achievement and from fame? Descend and be lost amid the masses of humans. One will flow like Tao, unseen. They will go about like life itself, with no name and no home. Simple are they, without distinction. To all appearances, they are a fool. Their steps leave no trace. They have no power. achieve nothing, has no reputation. Since they judge no one, no one judges them. Such is the perfect one. Their boat is empty.